In this lesson, I'm going to show you an example of how to create a break line for your drawing using dynamic blocks. And I'm going to actually create it both using our traditional parameter and action combinations, and I'm going to also show you how to do it using the new uh, parametric options in our dynamic block editor. So let's take a look at that. So I've got right here, I've just got a, a, a drawing, and I just have um, basically two lines, and then I have this little P line that represents my break. And I want to create a block of this, and what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to stretch one side, and it make both sides equal in length. That way, if I need to make this bigger or smaller, I can just stretch it out, and it'll, uh, it'll extend on both sides. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a block. So again, we looked at several ways to do this, but I'm just going to click Create up here on my uh, block panel on my ribbon. So I'm going to hit Create, and I'm going to call it Break MK for break mark. All right, I want the uh, insertion to be, I'm going to pick a point from my base point to be the middle of that line right there, and I'm going to select my objects. And I'm going to tell it that uh, you can allow exploding. You can set some of these things if you'd like. I'm going to tell it OK to open it in Block Editor. All right, so here's my block. And the first way I'm going to show you how to do it is using the traditional uh, parameters and actions. Now, the reason I want to show you this is you might run into situations to where this works better for you than using the new geometric constraints and the um, and our parametric tools over here. Also, if you're not using AutoCAD 2010 and you need to replicate this in an older version, this will allow you to do that as well. So we need to come over here. We need to select Linear Parameter. And for my starting point, I'm going to pick the midpoint of that line. And for my ending point, the end point over here, I'm going to give a stretch action. And I'm going to, it's asking me down in the command line to select a parameter. So I'm going to select distance one parameter. I'm going to pick it. It wants to know, specify a parameter point to associate with action or enter. I'm just going to kind of hover over here until my little bullseye is on the second part. And I'm going to hit enter. And then it, I'm going to do a crossing polygon to show the stretch. And I'm going to select my line that I want to stretch. And we see that now it's places stretch action right here. So let's go and test our block. If we select our block, we see that we have our little grip here. So we can drag it, but it's only dragging one side. So I'm going to close that. And what I want to do is I actually want to add an additional a stretch action. So I'm going to pick it. And here's this is a little bit more, this is kind of an advanced lesson in creating this dynamic block. A lot of people don't know about this, but I'm going to select the same parameter. I'm going to select the same point because that's the point that I'm going to stretch by. But when I go to do my crossing, I'm going to do a crossing over here on the other end, and I'm going to select this line. And notice now we have two different stretches, stretch and stretch one. So let's test it again. And I can tell you right now, we're not quite done. It's not going to work just right yet, but let's just see what happens. I'm going to stretch right here, and we see that something's happening, but it's not exactly what we expected, because we see that this line is moving, but it's not holding this side uh, constant like we would like for it to. So it's not quite working the way that we expect it. So I'm going to close the test block window, and I'm going to look over here. I'm going to click on this stretch action, and I'm going to go to my properties. And what we have to do is we have to give an angle offset here. Since it's happening over here on the other side, and we want it to, to basically mirror the action. So as we stretch out here, we want this one to actually stretch in the opposite direction. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to give it an angle offset of 180 degrees. And by the way, this is where you could also define that if nothing is selected, uh, this, this is where we can set things, just general properties for our block, such as do we allow exploding and things like that. So some of those settings that we found in our previous dialog box when we just created a block are found right here. So just want you to make sure that you knew that. Okay, so now let's test this block. Test block. Select our line. Still only have one 
point here to control by, but now as we stretch, we see that it, it changes both sides. So we accomplished what we were set out to do. But now I want to just show you how to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to use our new parametric tools. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy these objects down. I'm going to come over here to constraints and I'm going to just show you how we can do the same thing using these these tools. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that these two lines stay parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and give a parallel geometric constraint. The other thing that I want to make sure is that they both stay equal. So I'm going to come and give it an equal constraint. And that way they always stay equal. The next thing I want to do is I want to lock this side and this point and this point so that we can only stretch to from one side over here or over here. So I'm going to tell it to fix this point right here and I'm going to tell it to fix this point right here. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to give it until you add an actual um, dimensional constraint you haven't really made a dynamic block out of it because there's no uh, action associated with it. So uh, I'm going to give it a horizontal dimensional constraint from over here to the other end over here and I'm just going to accept the default values for that and when it asks me at the bottom for number of grips I'm going to tell it two that way we could actually stretch from both sides and now let's test our block so we see we have both lines here I can select it and we can see both of them in action as we looked before we can stretch this one on one side and it stretches both sides and if we look at this one, we can stretch, and as we stretch, we can see that it's extending on both sides, and it's working the same way. Now, the cool thing about this is I can actually stretch from either side. The other cool thing is, is that I can give this a distance. So right now, it's showing me that it's about three or four feet. I can actually tell it four feet, and it would make this line four feet long. This is only half of it, so if I want to do the same thing, I'm going to have to tell it, uh, two feet instead of four feet and we end up with the same thing because I'm only measuring half. Alright, so that's working good. Now the other thing I want to show you is uh, what if you did want to make it to where you could stretch it from both sides over here? Well, one way that you could do that is you could come over here to our um, parameters. We can add another linear parameter and we can add it from this same midpoint to the end point on this side and basically just do everything we did over here on this side as well. We would come over here to actions. We would select stretch action. We would select distance to parameter. We would want our little bullseye on this end. We would do our crossing. We would select our objects and then we would do the same thing again. We would give another stretch action. Choose the same parameter from the same side but the difference is we're going to come over here and we're going to stretch this side and this line and we're going to select it, the stretch action right here. We're going to go to properties and we're going to give an angle offset of 180 degrees. All right, so let's test our block again. And now we see that we can actually stretch this from both sides. It's a little cumbersome just because our grips get off of our uh, the endpoints of our line because of the way that we've stretched this, but uh, it still works nonetheless. But if you can, um, if you have 2010, you can see that using the parametric tools is much easier, makes a much cleaner block and a much more intuitive way to operate this block. Okay, so just play around with that a little bit and see what you can come up with in your own dynamic blocks.